Right, welcome back, welcome back. Right, I weren't going to do a video, but luckily for you lot, and all my amazing fans out there, we're back. We're doing a budget, we're doing a budget special. Now, there's a reason and there's a theme behind this budget special, right? I'm making an announcement. I'm making an announcement while I'm doing this budget special. Let's talk about the budget special. All right, it's called a funny pie, All right? It's a little family recipe. Um, these are the basic ingredients. Sausages, peeled plum tomatoes, can, and some onion and that's it and a pot so I think you can imagine what happens I think you have an idea of where this is going so first thing we're gonna do is just gonna lower the temperature on this a little bit because it's been on for a while so yeah so we're making um, a little bit of an announcement um, I've been doing my cooking videos for about six months now. Um, I've got 50 subscribers. Thank you for everyone who has subscribed. It's right, it's not an announcement saying I'm fucking going or I'm not going to do any. There'll be, a, there'll be just less of them. Right? I've been doing too many. I had two weeks off on holiday. And this is part of the conversation. All right, it's just part of the conversation. Right, let's first, um, while we're doing the announcement, I need to brown off, we don't have to brown these sausages off. You can just put them in the pot like my nan does. But we're gonna brown them off. We're gonna brown them off. As it's a budget special, we're just gonna use some vegetable oil. So I can tell that's very hot already. I don't want it to be over hot. So, he's making an announcement. What's this announcement? Right, so, anyway. In 2003, um, I became and joined as a post Okay, so I was a postie, all right, brilliant job, um, good money, we're not talking 60, 70k, we're not talking anything like that, um, comfortable, comfortable money, you know, and if you ever got into debt, which I did, and you wanted to get out of debt. I'm not taking, I'm not saying, oh, I'm in debt because I've been gambling and I've gone to Las Vegas and banged a load of hookers and lost 100K. Raw mail won't be able to help you out there. But we've overspent by a few grand, right? We had some money, we spunked it, we've, we're about three grand in debt. What do we do? Well, what you do, is you do a bit of overtime, like I did, for about four months. Four months. One, two, three, four, sorted. Not a problem. Actually, gained money and had money in the bank. That's the sort of job we're talking about. So we're talking about the job, and I'll actually tell you how much they're on. So when you see your little humble posty all struggling in the cold delivering letters because that's what they do they deliver paper yeah they, they put a piece of paper through your letterbox so it's that yeah it's not a skill it's not hard you just put it in right that's their number one goal of their job so I was on um, be 
this was around about say 2012, 2013, 2010, 2008, 9, was on about 23 grand a year, right? The mortgage was well low, because that's gone up now, right? Let's whack these sausages in, let's, let's do that. Because that's gone up now. My mortgage was about 259, now it's about 404. Which I know a lot of you are going to be saying, well, that's not really exactly a lot, is it? And uh, you are 100% correct to Mondo. It isn't a lot. But as we've all um, been experiencing this uh, cost of living crisis, which isn't a crisis because basically what's happened is is we've uh, cut ourselves off from our cheapest fuel source that we used to import, which is Russia. So, well done to us, well done. Let's bring out the pots and pans and bang for the NHS. Yay, rainbow flags, yeah, we love it. So, but because of that, and things have gone up, um, and all that sort of business. Other wages have gone up, but you know, other things have gone up too, like mortgages. I've only got a tiny mortgage. You know, I haven't got a three bedroom house of 400 grand with two kids and a wife to support. And this is what we're gonna get on to. This is what we're gonna get on to. So anyway, um, so I became, a po I joined Raw Mail in 2003 uh weren't the best posters in the world i did play the game a little bit on their stages on their stage system of sickness and uh, was able to you know get an extra few four three or four weeks holiday a year just by you know playing the game really um but anyway anyway apart from that it was a good job for someone of my standing it was a day I've got no skills, I've got no GCSEs, I've got no qualifications, I can't do shit really. Um, so for a manual labour job, they're basically warehouse, it's for a warehouse job, it was good money. It's the best money, best money really. You know, if you're gonna work in a warehouse, you know, there's people out there working in warehouses and they don't actually know, just join them all out, just be a posty. You'll be on fucking decent money for doing the same skillage type of job. But they don't know because nobody says anything, right? So currently, as it stands at the moment, postage on about £27,000 a year. Did you know that? £27,000 a year, and that's not and that's basic. That's not even with overtime. So when you see your little poor Hubble posty struggling along, dude, don't feel sorry for him. He's on fucking, he's in, he lives in, what they do is they live in the dream world. They've been living in the dream world for quite a while. Uh, I don't want to be a wanker, but I'm going to be. But I'm actually quite glad to say their little dream world is starting to come apart. Because what's happening is, is a lot of these posties, it's a wage, it's a it's a non-skilled job that pays the same wages as a skilled job. So they're very lucky. They're so lucky, frankly, but they don't know because they don't know what it's like, the world outside of Royal Mail. And the world outside of Royal Mail is a fucking nightmare because it basically involves mostly minimum wage if you can't do anything if you haven't got no skills you're in minimum wage right now anyway so i've had word on the grapevine that some of them are struggling some of them some of them are starting to become poor okay because their mortgage fixed rates they're coming off their mortgage fixed rates you know, they're now hitting five, six percent interest rates on probably their ridiculous houses that they've got. Um, and their money is good, but, you know, 
shit is coming up to meet them or they're coming down towards shit. I think they're coming down towards me. I think that's what's happening. And they're starting to moan. Which I find is quite funny actually because I've been skint as arseholes since uh, I suddenly didn't become a postman in 2013. And it was a shock. It was a fucking shock to the system. Because it was basically half the wages. So when I was a postman, I used to have, after all my bills were paid, out of my wages, I used to have £200 a week for myself. And then when I wasn't a postie, I had a hundred. Now, a lot of people out there are gonna say, well, that's not too bad. So, you, you know, you've got 400 pounds a week to yourself. Yeah, but I used to have 800. And that, what it, that means, what does that mean? It's what, I'll tell you what it means. This is what it meant for me. So I live on my own, I've got a little flat, little mortgage. Um, it meant that I could have a very comfortable life in my flat and I could go out. Now, after the second day of doom, because I had the first day of doom, that was me fucking up my girlfriend in 2006, which eventually led on to uh, lose my job at Royal Mail because it was just basically like a slow motion car crash. I was fucked. Emotionally, I was fucked. Because um, she was like the first girlfriend that I met when I was 19 and it all ended at 29. And then the Royal Mail job ended at 36. Just see, there's a pattern. There's something else that happened in between but I'm not willing to say what that was just yet. Um, I thought it would help me gain a girlfriend and uh, it actually cost me everything. So, anyway. Um, yeah. So, let's take these off now, because we need it, which, which put a bit of color on me, that's all we do. Yeah, so that happened. Um, and I went back into motorbike courier, because that's what I did before I was at Royal Mail. But that was in like, you know, 96, two, uh, 2001 to 2003, and then I got a job at Royal Mail. And the money was alright, it weren't too bad actually, you know. It was like £500 a week. But that was £500 a week in 2001. So, a little bit different than £500 a week now, right? Still good money, but you know what I mean? Anyway, so, yeah, so I suddenly didn't become a postman. So I had to get, so I went into bike curing and it was shocking, it was shit. It was just as bad as minimum wage, pointless, and you're self-employed, um, no holiday, no sick, bike breaks down, you're fucked, you crash, you're fucked, broken leg, fucked, don't bother, too risky. So I had to get a job in a carer wiping bum cheeks for a living brilliant love it absolutely fucking hated it it was an absolute fucking nightmare yeah don't do it if you're gonna the only people that like doing it are them sort of girls that like doing it obviously they're caring you know uh, you know I, I said to like one of the managers and she said I said just look at me fucking CV Look, there's nothing on my CV that says care. Yeah, fucking nothing. And she's like, oh, and it's like, well, you know. And I had to make up bullshit while I left Royal Mount. Oh, I like a sore knee or whatever, fucking, you know. Anyway, so then we, um, then after about three years of that, because I just, one day I just went to go to work. Uh, I got on the bike, and amazingly it had petrol in it, which was fucking rare. I mean, it obviously had petrol in it, but we had to run it low, mate, because we, look, look, 
half the rock the rock um like i said before raw male gave me 200 pound a week to myself i could have a decent home life and go out once or twice a week or do whatever have a few takeaways it was never skint i'm never running out of fags i'm never running out of food i'm never rolling fucking doggins because i've got no fucking fags right never happens never fucking happen right it didn't need to happen because it didn't because we had enough money so anyway and then you're talking well 100 pound a week yeah so what i decided to do was um i decided well i'm virtually gonna hunker down because the 100 pound a week compared to 200 what it does you can either have a decent um you can have a decent home life ish if you're careful but you can't go out or you can go out and if you do you know for a fact that in a week's time you're going to be skint and there's nothing worse than being skint one week after you've been paid and you've got another three weeks to go till you get to the next payday and i call that leapfrogging right and that's what we've been doing right anyway so I eventually fucked that off and I just didn't go in, I just didn't turn up. I thought, no. Nah. I had to write them a, a brief note saying I've left. And then I got some agency jobs uh, which were quite shit. Which, which, look, I've just come out of wiping actual bum cheeks for a living at night in a care home. Wiping shit from old people's asses, right? And dealing with your basically your job as a carer deals with piss, shit, and puke. Right? Brilliant. Love it. Absolutely love it. I, I couldn't stand it. I absolutely fucking hated it. So, and I actually used to pace around in my flat before I'd go into to wipe me up the arse. And when I and I done I, I done it at night. If you're gonna do it, do it at night because obviously there's less of them up and about. And also during the day, if I, like I said, like one of the carers said to me, she said, like if you'd be if you do the, if you was to do this job during the day, you'd probably get sacked in about a fucking night in the day because they'd realise you you're not really that caring. You know, you know, I was always there from at night, you know, they fall out their bed or whatever and all that business, but you know, at the end of the day, I'd rather be delivering letters and having two hundred pounds a week to myself. Rather than wiping ass at night in a care room being fucking skin. And then people will say, Oh well, why don't you just do like some overtime? True, you can do. But there's a problem. Now because it's minimum wage, the problem with it is, is you can either, when you do overtime, there's no point doing just a little bit, because it doesn't make any it doesn't make any fucking difference, right? So what you end up having to do is lots of overtime, if it's available, right? So basically, what you end up doing in minimum wage land on overtime is basically living at your work for trying to get up to the same-ish money-ish than you was at Royal Mount. And basically, it's a your time versus some money factor. And it's just not worth bothering. I'd rather just be skint. And that's what happened. I just thought, I can't bother. I'd rather just get me 100 quid, you know, be fairly comfortable-ish in my flat. Any problems that come up, you're fucked. TV, your, tele, your monitor on your computer breaks, fucked. Xbox breaks, fucked. Bike breaks down, fucked. Anything breaks, fucked. All right, you can't do anything. So you, like literally my flat, is exactly the same as it was in 2010. Um, really, nothing is really nothing on minimum wage. Fuck all moves on. 
it just stays static, right? So, <coughs> I'm going to whack these onions, I'm just going to whack these onions in and give them a little bit of colour before we put them in, oh I've turned this off and I've got a twat. Okay. That's me yabbering, because I've just got this announcement that I want to do, that I want to say, and it's going to be, um, for me it will be a bit of a life changer, sort of, in a weird minimum wage world. Minimum in minimum wage world, it'll be uh, interesting. Let me just say that. So, anyway, so I, so anyway, so three years after wiping bum cheeks, I went, fuck this. This is shit, right? I mean, if it's the only job you can get, then you have to do it, then you know, there's not much you can do. So I discovered the land of Kitchen Porter. And it's basically a case of this. Do you want to wipe poo out of people's bum cracks? Or do you want to wash up with fairy liquid? For the same money. I rest my case. I rest my case. It's a case of where's my marigolds, where's the washing up liquid, and it? It's not a case of getting me in there wiping bum cheeks and, it, and dealing with explosive diarrhea. No, 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 no. Where's the washing up? I'll do it. Right, so that's what we've done. So the first place I went to, it was all right. Um, but like, yet again, it's crap. It's, it's just shitty hours, right? It's working at stupid times. So I used to start work at three in the afternoon, right? Three in the afternoon. And don't forget, if I was a postman, I'd be home by then, right? I'd be home by then. I used to finish me round up, say, like, tell you what, in the early days of Royal Mail, because they had some big changes in 2006, but when I first signed up, if I was still on my round at 10 o'clock, I'd be pissed off. If I was still on my round at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'd be pissed off, right? So anyway, the changes come in. We all had to work a bit longer because the rounds got bigger. Um, and, we, you know, but still, we used to be home by 2 o'clock. Be home by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And £200 a week in your pocket once all the bills are paid. Imagine that. Isn't that amazing? Brilliant, that. Right? And all I'm doing is, like, uh, Delivering some fucking paper for a letterbox. Brilliant. I love it. So obviously you can tell I'm not a huge fan of the posties. I'm not their number one supporter in life. Let me just say that. Because they're living in fucking dreamland, that's why. Or they were living in dreamlands. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So, like we've said, the economic crisis has happened. These people, because they've been able to earn really decent money for literally no skills, they've all got bigger houses and all that sort of stuff. Now it's starting to hit them. So like I said before, I'm getting word on the grapevine now that some of them are getting a bit pissed off because they can't do anything. Well, welcome to my world, chaps. And that's what it's been like for 10 years. So now I'm 46. So... That's what minimum wage has given me. Nothing. It just keeps you... It keeps you on a little treadmill. It keeps you on a little hamster wheel. Just going round and round and round and round. You can't do fuck all. So... And then you could say, Oh, why don't you train up to be like a chef or whatever? Yeah, I could do. But their hours are shit. Right, their hours are shit. I get it. My hours are... 10 o'clock start in the morning. And I finish at 5 in the afternoon. So it's as near as fucking damn it I can get to Royal Mail hours. But obviously, half the money of Royal Mail is still the same, right? So, and they don't work weekends. So I get the weekends off. I get the weekends off. I do 10 to 5, and I go home. And everyone out there might be saying, what's the matter with that? Well, there isn't. 
for a kitchen porter, my job is actually quite good. So, you know, but the money is still the same. But it isn't slightly because where I am, where I was at another place, um, the County Hotel in, in uh, Essex in Cheltenham, <coughs> um, we didn't get any tips. We didn't get any tips. And I didn't know about tips. You know, it's not like I've done loads of jobs in the catering trade before. That was my first job in the kitchen. But we didn't get tips, so it was shit. Well, where we are now, I get about 50 quid a week in tips. So, so that's 200 pound a month. Right. So we're going to get round to my announcement. Don't worry, it's all right. It will happen. Um, so, when I was at the County Hotel, I, and I was on £100 a week to myself, like I've always been since 2013, um, I came up with a little uh, workaround called the float jar trick. Now, what this is, all it is, all it is, is, it's, I'll tell you, it's this. To explain, uh, basically, at the County Hotel, it didn't work. Basically, what you what I was going to do for one month, instead of having a hundred pound a week, I'd put myself on fifty quid a week, and the other fifty quid I would bank and I'd put it in a jar, and it's a float. So I called it, <coughs> I called it the float jar trick. But then once I transferred it over at the end of the other month and I divvied it up, it basically gave me an extra 50 quid a week. So instead of being on 100 quid, I was on 115. So, but then I've got to do a whole month on being on 50 quid a week. So, uh, it's, it's, is it worth doing? Not really. Now, this is where it gets a bit different where I am now and the economic situations out there right because I know that people like the postman are starting to struggle not that I'm pleased about that <laughs> Love it. not that I'm pleased about that as you can tell but I do find it quite funny so they're coming down to my level they're coming down to my poverty. I'm not going up to there. They're coming down to me. Fucking love it. But the difference between me and them is I'm fucking used to being poor. They're not. They're not used to being poor. They're starting to struggle, mate. Oh, yes. Oh, I love it. Anyway. Anyway. So. What's the announcement? Well, what I'm going to do is normally when I get paid, I normally have about, like I said, 400 pound a week to myself. So, and this is where I've just realized how bad minimum wage actually is. So for the last six months, I've been doing this cook, I've been doing this cooking on my channel just for something for me to do. Okay, I'm cooking food, right? I'm cooking edible products. I'm not going out clubbing. I'm not going to the pub five nights a week and getting pissed and spending a hundred quid every fucking go or whatever it is. I'm cooking food. And I've noticed I can't actually afford to do the amount of videos that I'm doing because it costs money yeah but it's just food so I'm actually getting fucked by food why well because I'm on minimum wage right so I've noticed for the last three months I've had to get to about uh, week two in a month or three and I'm having to pass Borrowing a 50 quid from that person, a 40 quid from that person, a, another 50 quid from that person. Then when you get paid, you give it back and rinse and repeat. And it's the same cycle. <coughs> so my mortgage has gone up and all that sort of stuff. 
not to its not to the extent of probably a post name. Um, and um, yeah. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do, I'll show you. I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do. So <clears throat> each one of these pots represents a hundred pound that I normally have, right? So we've got one, two, three, four. All right, that's four hundred quid. Um, I'm going to get another two pots for the tips that I pick up each month, two hundred quid. So they're the tips. So this is what I'm going to do. So when I get paid at the end of this month, because I've been on holiday, I haven't picked up one of these jars, which is a hundred quid. Because I haven't been there to earn the tips. So I'm actually poorer being on holiday than not. That's minimum wage. Well, it's not minimum wage. That's minimum. I call it minimum wage job land. Because that's what it is. Right? You can't beat your mouth. You can't beat your mouth. Right. So. This is what we plan to do. So at the end of this month. I'm going to not give myself 400 quid, I'm going to give myself 200 quid. So, but because I have to pay back some other debts and that 50, I think it works out to about 200 quid all in all, I'm going to have to live off this 200 pound for the month. So that's the first holding month, okay, it's called a holding month. So we get to the end of the month, we hold. Don't buy anything. Don't need to buy food. I've got shit loads of food. I've got. I, this is why I'm in a little been a bit in trouble because I've bought loads of stuff. I am a food millionaire. All right. So this is how we're going to do it. So end of this month, holding. Don't do anything. We live off that. The end of September comes around, and we're we're not going to be poncing. So we'll get to this point and we don't owe anyone any money. And we get our usual 400 quid to ourselves. Now this is why it's called the float jar trick. So what you do, this is what you do. You take that 200 pounds, you put it in a jar and you live off 200. And during that month, we pick up another two sets of 100 quid they go in the float jar as well I think you can see where I'm going with this then the third month comes around so we've done the first month a holding month we only have to do one of them the second month comes around put yourself in 200 quid save the other 200 quid plus the 200 quid into weeks and tips or a month in tips that's 400 quid then the third month comes around with our 400 quid one two three four but we haven't got 400 quid because we've we've still got the float jar of 400 quid what does that give you? It gives you 800 quid. That's my raw mail money. That's what I used to have every month. Right? Now we can't do that every month. So what we're going to do is, let's put these back just to give you an idea. So what we're going to do is once every other month we're going to have an 800 pounder up and, and the other month in between that we're going to call that a minimum wage month and that's going to be 200 quid so this is going to take a bit of, we, where I've just been bobbing along on well I've got 400 quid can't really do that I could do sort of this but I can't really do much it, I'm taking a different tactic I'm going to go for an all or nothing month so one month I will be poor as, poor as chips, but 
the next month, winner, winner, chicken takeaway dinner, go out, take away, do other various activities, go up to the pub, but then next month, poor as a fucking biscuit. So it's going to be very up, raw mail, down, minimum wage, up, raw mail, down, minimum wage, up, and I've written down, and I've written down the, the months in when. So basically what I'm doing is I'm manipulating my minimum wage. So I get a set amount, and instead of just spreading that all over a, a, a course of a year, and it's all a bit average, we're gonna go from one extreme to the other. And the reason why I can do that is because I'm used to it. Because I'm used to being fucking poor, right? So on the food front, I haven't really got to worry too much, really. I'm just putting these sausages in here, just lying them in. I haven't really got to worry too much because we've already got everything, right? So when things become low, instead of I've had to go out and shell out fucking 300 quid in ingredients, I've only got to spend like tenner, tenner. So the months I'm going for are going to be this. These are going to be my rural mail months. It starts in November. It starts in November. I can't wait. I really can't. I don't want to say anything at work because it'll probably piss them off, right? Because it, it, it just embarrasses them. You know, the governor's going to think, ah, oh, I'm going to make him feel like a wanker and I, so I'm not going to say anything. What I will do, though, what I will do, is when it is a Royal Mail month, every day I'm going to wear a red shirt, <laughs> just for a laugh. So we're going for November. These are Royal Mail months. These are when I've got £800 a month spending money to myself. And the minimum wage months will be down to 200 So it's like eight to two, eight to two, eight to two. So the Royal Mail months are going to be November, January, March, May, July and September. So those, where, those are the months where we're actually going to be able to have a little bit of a life, actually. It's going to be quite strange. But then you're saying, oh, well, what about the £200 months? What about the, what about the months when you're really poor? Well, I'm used to it, aren't I? You know, I can handle it. What is going to be very strange, what is going to be very strange is actually having every other month some money now obviously sadly i'd like to be at raw mail and have that all the time but we can't do so that is a shit i mean we could do because the way that i lost my job was i think illegal frankly um so if we've got any legal advice or any raw mail reps watching uh, the manager came round my house and asked me to resign Technically, you're not allowed to do that because what happened, I was supposed to be going on a Tuesday back to the Royal Mail office uh, and he was going to give me a talking to and apparently he was going to give me a job back. But because I refused him into my flat, which I'm in, entitled to do, I got asked to fuck off. So I actually think that's illegal, really. And I think it is. So any Royal Mails out there, any posties or anything like that, Please get in touch and let me know because I don't think that is allowed. And because I was young and stupid, I, I, I went, yeah. So, well, not yet, but I just didn't think I had much choice, really. Right, I'm going to put a little bit of water in that. And we're just going to put a little bit of salt and a bit of pepper. And just to season it. Right, now, we've got to do the potatoes. Yeah, so that's what I'm planning to do. So, it's very exciting because it will actually allow me every other month. Um, I know what the minimum wage months are going to be like. I know, they're going to be shit. I know they are. Like, I know that, you know that. But... I'm not I'm not overly I'll tell you what we'll do 
I'm not overly bothered because, like I said, I'm pretty, it's been 10 years now, and I'm pretty good at dealing with no money. Or, not no money, but I'm very good at, when I've got a little bit of money, thinking, well actually, if I do this, this and this, that is going to skimp me, and I'm going to be skimped in about a week's time. Where if I do this, this and, or not do this, this and this, we'll actually have some money. So that is basically the plan. I know it's a little bit sad. It's a little bit of a sad thing to do. But at the end of the day, it's the only way I can combat um, minimum wage land. Because like I said before, a lot of these places, they're all the same. You know, minimum wage, <coughs> The thing with um, minimum wage is it's the same shit everywhere you go. It's just the only thing is is what what are you what are you prepared to do for your minimum wage, right? Uh, you know, my choice was either wiping bum cheeks in a care room at night, twelve hour shifts, fucking horrific. Or working in the kitchen, uh, washing up and cleaning stuff, and that's and that's just what I went with because at the end of the day, you know, give me that washing up rather than where's that nappy or where's the or where's the um, where's the bum wipes. Do you know what I mean? I'm not being bad because you know there's people who like doing it. And actually, probably I've actually been looking on a few care jobs and they're actually more money than minimum wage. But still no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that ever again. The crewing, that can fuck off because that is fucked. London's a shit hole. It's a very finey, stabby dump, and I can't stand it. I haven't been that back down to London since the uh, pandemic in 2020. That was the last time I got the shit out of there and was lucky enough. I mean, look, I'm grateful for the job I've got. I've got a job um, and I'm actually very grateful that I can even do this. That, I'm e I, that I've even got a remote ability to turn... Because basically what I'm doing is I'm basically transforming once a month, once or once every other month. So I'm transforming six months out of the year, a minimum wage job into a posty job or posty money like job, which is going to be strange. Um, like I said, it's going to be very up and down. Um, but I am going to be doing less cooking videos um, because I just can't afford. I'll probably do a cooking video. When I do a cooking video, that's when you know I'm probably on a raw mail month, right? Because I'll have the money to do it. But when I'm not doing a cooking video, that's probably when you'll know, yeah. Sergeant Fury Toes is on a minimum wage month and he can't fucking even afford to squeak out a stinky fart. No. I'm telling you mate, it gets bad. Minimum wage is not good. It's a nightmare. But, but, if you know how to manipulate it, so <clears throat> that's all it is, it's just manipulation. We're just manipulating minimum wage to work for our advantage instead of being on that hamster wheel, all right? Now, saving-wise, you know, if you wanted to save that, you could, I suppose. But I don't want to, I just want to enjoy it, all right? Because I'm not used to doing that. You know, at the moment, 
you know, if I go up to the pub and I spend too much money, I know that I'm going to be fucking skinned for about two weeks and I can't be bothered anymore. I'm getting too old to do it. I just want to be able to go out, enjoy it. And okay, I can't do it every month. So the next best thing is I can manipulate the wages to do it every other month. So that's what we're going to do. Right, so that's the funny pie done. I should have actually showed you. I do apologise. I don't want to do a... I don't want to do a J and not show you what I've done. <clears throat> yeah, because I'm doing a new bit on my channel. I'm reviewing... I'm reviewing uh, other people's creations. So that's what I've done. So we've got the... Let's just show you. There you go. So they're just raw potatoes in there. They'll cook. So we've got the sausages at the bottom. The plum tomatoes, a bit of water, some onion on top of the sausages, the potatoes on top of the onion, the plum tomatoes, water, salt, pepper, in a pot. I've got this on about, I've got it on about 160, and I'll be in there for about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe a bit more, just keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, so that's my announcement. That's what I'm doing. That's my plan. Uh, everyone needs a bit of a plan. It gives you a bit of hope. I was getting a bit down. So we've now got a bit of hope um, in able to manipulate the land of minimum wage, which I think is fucking disgraceful. Um, but it is what it is. There's nothing we can do about it, you know. We have to work with what we got. But the advantage that Sergeant's got, he's very good at being poor. Very efficient, very frugal. And it just makes you very, very, um, I don't know, it makes, it makes you something else. I'm not the same person as I was. Um, I'm not saying it ruins you, but it does, it does bring you down sometimes. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, that's why I was making, doing the Indian makeaways, because I just couldn't really, I could afford to get an Indian takeaway, but I knew that it's, it's 40 quid down the, down the pan when I could just make it myself, you know. But the initial outlay of the ingredients was the biggest hurdle. Anyway, that's in the part one. That's the announcement. Uh, I'll see you in part two when the funny pie is done. So that's a family recipe, a funny pie, with the announcement of the sergeant of what he's planning to do. Winner, winner. Hurry up, November. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, mate. See you later. Be good. <laughs>